Hello and welcome back to the Artify um, Codecast. So today I'm going to be working on some JavaScript modules. So in the last video, it was a bit rough. I mostly just Googled stuff and tried to debug um, some code and I didn't really get that far. Um, between then and now, I've done a lot of research um, about JavaScript modules, about like local development, about how to split code up, how to bundle it, how to package it. I'm still not positive what direction to go in, but I thought I'd do this video anyways. Um, it's probably mostly going to be me figuring things out, but um, I do have a lot of things that I've learned along the way already, so that should help me make some informed decisions. So it's also going to be some decision making, and then hopefully we're also going to get to the point where we have a bunch of local modules at the end of this video that we that are depending on each other and that can be included in another um, library or uh, you know web app and depended on there. Okay, so let's get started and. The first thing I want to do is just open up a new doc, a new um, you know text file, and let's just save this as like thoughts. So I just want to plan out, you know, what do I really want here? Well, okay. So first of all, what I really really want is modules that can depend on each other and be included slash bundled inside a web app. Okay, so that's my first priority. Um, and then my second priority is going to be, uh, if you're wondering what that noise is in the background, it's, um, it's like a, uh, a website called You Are Listening To, and it picks up uh, broadcasts from like the traffic cops and, and stuff like that um, in a certain city, and it also plays like nice calm music, um, and I really like it. <laughs> I program to it a lot of the time. Uh, I'm not sure how well you can hear it though. Okay, so the second thing I want is... Um, I mean, it would be it would be awesome if uh, if we could um, bundle JS inside these modules into separate files, as well as have. Um, separate CSS that's bundled and put where we want it. And the reason for this is, you know, I'm building a non-standard kind of library setup. So, okay, so like this, if you look over here, this is the switch JS package <coughs> or module or whatever that I've been trying to set up. And you can see inside the source file, we have the switch.js code. We have some SAS um, <coughs> um, styles, and then we have a switch test.js. And now normally, this test file would be like a mocha or a jest, a jest test file. In my example, it's not. It's not even something that is going to like return true or whatever. Um, all it is, is if we go in here, <laughs> Oh shoot, no, if we go in here. So all it is is a bunch of calls to our library and then a console logs like, hey, this thing was turned on, this thing was turned off. And um, and also it includes the switch library so that if I import this on um, my page, um, I'm also gonna get the, the, the switch library. Um, Yeah, so that I can, so that on the page inside like an HTML file, um, which you can see here, right, HTML file, um, 
I can click on various like visual components and see them expand or collapse. Now, I know the standard way of testing code like this is to actually use a testing framework, okay? And I know that, you know, also the like visual tests, they're not ideal, right? Because you can't automate them. You can't, like, if you write some changes to your code, you don't want to have to go to um, a, a web page, like load up a web page every time and click through all the tests and make sure they're working as expected. And to really do that, you'd have to look at the HTML and make sure like the right things are being added and removed. However, I am a strong believer in doing things the easy way that makes the most sense to you first, right? Who cares about what the official, well-supported, like long-term thing is? Just get it working for you in the way that works for you, in the way that you like, in the way that you enjoy programming, and and then like worry about that other stuff. Because if you, like if, okay, so if, for example, if here I worried about doing things the official way, um, I would get distracted. I would get caught up and, okay, now I gotta learn this testing framework. Now I gotta do this, now I gotta do that. And I would never get back to my project, right? But if I just do this kind of like good enough and it works well enough, in the future, I'm gonna learn how to do all that stuff. But you can't, you can't always get caught up because it's a long road. It's a lot. It's like a, a year long road to learn all of the best practices, and just being aware of them and being, you know, saying like, okay, I know why those are a good idea. I think that's enough. Okay, so that's the reason I want to like. So normally with like a module bundler, it takes one file. It bundles it up, and then it spits it out. And I want to have the ability to have like different files be bundled separately and then placed in separate directories. Now, thinking about that, I'm wondering why do I want my test file to be bundled? That doesn't make sense. It like I'm not stripping it to production. So I guess yeah, that doesn't need to be bundled. Okay. So um, so let's not do that. And then the, the SAS file, well, so here I, I included the mini reset that I was importing before here because it was just too much trouble to import it separately. But let me just see, am I doing anything super complicated in here? Or would it make sense to just create, just have this be a CSS file? Because that would be fine too, right? I could just convert this to a CSS file and then boom, you know, I'm done with that. Um, okay. Uh, well, I kind of would just enjoy having the ability to do this anyways. So I think I'm going to just like put this, you know, maybe it's a little bit lower, maybe it's like a four. And at this point, these numbers are just like priorities. They're not um, steps, okay? Uh, so what else do I want to do? Um, I, I think it would be nice to have like a series of like Jest tests or Mocha tests or whatever. Um, I think for, from like my perspective, that's like a five. Um, Mocha or Jest tests, maybe figure out how to um, automate front end testing, right? Okay. So, yeah. Um, but really what I, what I want to start with is just these modules that can depend on each other and be included inside a web app. Um, and I also, as like a, a part of this, I want to be able to um, uh, work, work with these modules locally. Okay, one second. I'm going to just lower the volume on this. Okay, so um, so I, I, I figured out a good way to, to 
work with the um, files locally and I can show you um, my thoughts on that. Okay, I'll just put this in. Oh, in one second, I'll be right back. Okay, and I'm back. Um, okay, so I have uh, this document about code sharing. So my goal is to find an easy way to share code across projects in a local development. So this is a file that I wrote up um, a couple days ago, just trying to like research all the different ways of doing this and figure out what, what the best way to do it is. And I wrote up all these notes and I found a really good solution called Yalc. Um, so what this does is kind of, so you know like um, there's the NPM registry and the whole idea behind NPM is like sharing, you know, package code across projects and, you know, posting it publicly so that it can be shared, you know, with other people and they can just include your libraries in their code. <clears throat> so that you can also set up like a private repository. You can even do it through NPM. It requires an enterprise account, which is probably, you know, thousands of dollars, but you can do that or you can r run your own um, server that, you know, allows you to publish NPM packages uh, kind of locally within your own organization and then other people in your organization can, you know, pull those down. And as far as I understand, it's not that complicated to set up, but it's kind of like a little bit more complicated probably than setting up a new WordPress site or something. You have to like provision a server, you have to have like, you know, passwords and whatever and then you know, expose it to um, your network, and then people can access it and, you know, publish things to it and, and pull things down from it. And then I think what that, what that can do, what that registry, your local kind of local area network registry can do, is um, <coughs> sit in front of something like NPM. So if the module isn't found in NPM, it'll, uh, or sorry, in your local registry, then it'll go out and look in the NPM registry and be like, okay, we'll pull it from there instead. And so it acts as kind of like a proxy for that registry. So you get the benefit of being able to have a private uh, repository of your, of your shared code as well as an external one. And, um, you know, along those lines, I think I showed you in the last video, there's this um, company... Uh, not called but but bit bit source and this is you know very similar i think to having like a private npm repository i think it's supposed to be easier i looked through the docs um and it's it's kind of a little bit complicated um in my opinion uh i i kind of gave up on it because i feel like if you're going to if you're going to develop something like that it should it should work like um, Dropbox. You know, it should be as simple as Dropbox where, you know, all you have is a folder, you drop things into it, and boom, it works. You know, like if you're gonna develop a whole SaaS product around sharing modules and sharing that kind of code, do something new, right? And, you know, at the, in the end, bit source felt really powerful to me, so I think it's really good for like, you know, strong tech teams and with strong like engineering backgrounds. But if someone just wants to like share a module really quick and not worry about like getting out of sync or, or whatever, um, I think a, you know a better solution than what they have currently is needed. And maybe they're the ones that you know solve it eventually, but not right now. Okay, so anyways, we have this private local area network repository or registry, right? And so Yalc is great for doing that too, except instead of using like a server, it's just gonna use a folder on your computer. So um, all you do is, you know, you go into your external lib and you type in Yelp publish. It's gonna take that, uh, that code and put it in a, in a folder, a globally accessed folder. And then in your main repo, you just say Yelp add and then the package. And then, um, you know, in uh, in the um, and then whenever you update the code, you just do Yalc push, and then it's gonna automatically look up 
everywhere where that package has been included um, because I, I imagine it keeps you know a cache or you know some kind of dictionary when you do this right so it's going to look up everywhere that you added it in the past and it's going to update it there which is pretty 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 awesome in my opinion um, it it provides a lot of the benefits of um, you know a, a local kind of registry uh, and it's all right on your computer and you can just kind of like sync everything um, together now the one thing that would compete with this for me is so in um, the package JSON itself so for like NPM the officially supported package JSON there's the ability to specify um, you know you know so like when you have the dev dependencies and then you have the name of the dependency. On the other end of that, you can do like a relative path, right? So you can do like like this, where you do like you know up one level, and then in the directory hello, and then in the directory lib, right? And that is um, you know it's kind of similar to Yalc in that it's local, right? It's all on your own computer. Um, it is a little bit fragile, right? Because if you ever change the directory uh, where the library is, um, you know, this is going to break. But um, it has a lot of the benefits, right? So I, I'm pretty sure um, this is going to live update, right? Where, whereas with Yelk Push, I think it doesn't. And I'm not positive that this, this uh, live updates, but I'm pretty sure that it live updates. Um, yeah, see, but I wasn't sure about this. So I didn't like, I didn't try out all of these solutions, but I just kind of like researched them, read about them, and then came up with possible issues, things that like I was uncertain about. Um, and then you'll see there's the mono repo solution, which I'm not too excited about. NPM link, which I think seems pretty broken. And then there's NPM link up, which, you know, isn't super popular. Uh, but it seems like a decent solution. So I think the top contenders are Yalc and this file thing. And I think um, I think this one might be the answer that I'm looking for. Um, because it keeps everything in the package JSON file. I mean, this Yalc stuff does too. Um, I guess the one issue, or so like, like one of the issues here that I should have added is that I think your code, your like code, uh, that code included this way um, might not be pushed to your production server. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that's true. Yeah, no, so I'm not going to say I think. So code included this way isn't pushed to your production server. And the reason I'm so certain about that is because you're going outside of your, you know, repository, right? So if you have like a project and it's, you know, on GitHub or whatever, um, or just using Git in general, it's in this folder that is in your Git repository, right? And if you go up a level and you include some code out there, it's not going to know about that, right? So this Git project is going to be the thing that you push to your, you know, your GitLab or GitHub account or whatever, and, and that triggers the deploy, right? And the code in there, unless you somehow include it manually and like kind of overwrite these, you know, file inclusions, it's not going to work. But, um, you know, that's the same thing for this. <laughs> so... Uh, Yalc is going to be behave the same way. I, so, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're they're fairly equivalent, and I'm I'm just going to try this one for now, the file include, and I I would like to try Yalc too because it also came up in a lot of the same um, discussions, but I think this is like the more widely um, supported, like the more widely accepted one. Okay. So um, this is the top thing 
So I could just work on that right now. And actually, let's let's do that. I just want to get that out of the way, right? Um, so let's go into here. Let's go into Switch.js. Um, we have the license. Let's get rid of our disk file. Um, why do I have no mod? Oh, okay. I have no modules because okay. So let's let's get rid of all of this stuff. I feel kind of bad about it because I did work on it a lot. Um, so the other day, I, I like I switched from just using pure Babel to like deciding I needed Webpack to like thinking that maybe I need Rollup because you know I'm reading all these articles. <laughs> And this is like a huge issue with the current state of JavaScript is there's so many possible solutions for everything, right? And so people eventually, like I, fi I figured out, people love Rollup for library development and Webpack for like web app development. And so I was like, okay, now I got to switch to Rollup. So, you know, let's go to this learn Rollup site and figure this out. Whatever, I'm gonna close all this stuff, okay? And I'm gonna do what I said at the beginning of this video that I said, you know, might be a long-term unsustainable practice, but is a really, really, really strong um, short-term practice if you realize what you're doing, which is just to have fun and do, you know, do what you're used to, to doing, right? So, um, so I'm gonna take this uh, switch code I'm going to paste it out here. I'm going to delete this source. I'm going to delete this webpack config. I'm going to delete the page. I'm going to have the package JSON. I'm going to delete the lock because I think that's generated automatically. I hope so. Okay, so now we just have this. Okay, so let's, um, I guess we can rename this to index. And I also, because I was, nervous about including all this stuff I commented all out uh, so let's comment this back in um, okay so I guess the the issue now is like I'm not gonna know if this is working okay that's fine okay let's get rid of these scripts um, and I can actually just delete this whole thing uh, the dev dependencies I don't need. So let's just delete that. Okay, so let's just see if we can get this like very basic version working. So let's go in here and do npm install so that we hopefully clean up everything. Yeah, so we did an npm install and we didn't get a node modules. So that's I think that means that it didn't, it like just realized that there's no libraries here. Okay, so um, let's uh, actually just commit this real quick. So removed all except the, the main library code. Okay, um, okay, so now I'm not exactly sure. I guess I'll publish this and then I'll include it. And then in that other file, it's going to be like, hey, we couldn't find this because this <coughs> doesn't it doesn't exist yet. We haven't made a module, a separate module for this. And this is in its own like top level file, the switch.js code. OK, so let's um, let's do this. So um, let's go into uh, I think it's it here yeah this is the artistify app so we're going to I think so let's first of all just look at our package JSON file yeah so we want this to be a dependency just a regular dependency not a dev dependency so let's do npm install and I think we can just do dot uh, dot dot slash switch JS. Let's try it. And let's look at our artistify app. 
All right, package JSON. Um, awesome. That's cool. Okay. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Oh, okay. So I think I know why these are all popping up now. Um, so they for so Babel moved from like having a bunch of separate kind of plugins and stuff to having a mono repo. Um, and so I think like they're now like prefixing all their packages with this like at Babel thing. I don't even know if it's a mono repo or if it's just namespaced. But anyways, I think I need to like replace my version of of Babel or like maybe I did maybe I upgraded some part of it but I didn't upgrade every part of it because I was running into this with with my switch.js code and I was saying the same thing but like <laughs> fewer lines of it um, yeah so I think I think that's the issue but I'm not gonna worry about that right now so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into the JavaScript code where we're including switch.js we import switch.js and we we can get rid of this one. Um, there's no reason to, except you know, if we're including it for some reason somewhere else, we wouldn't want that one to like override our current one and make us think that it's working when it's not. Okay, so now let's go to localhost. I think it's seven seven seven. Oh yeah, and we got to go to the bundles page. No such file or directory. Hmm. Okay, so let's look inside um, our node modules. So I'm actually, I'm not sure. Does Sublime Text, does Sublime text show linked directories because the way that this um, I think it might but the, so the anyways the way that this uh, geez the way that this works, where you know I install the the file, um, it includes a symbolic link inside of the uh, node modules. So this folder, I believe, is the same as my module folder. It's just linked in here. And so if I, I guess if I go in, in here, you know what, I'm going to test this. So if I do that, yeah, okay, so it changes. It changes in my main code. Okay, so my main is index.js. And I have the index.js here. I'm really not sure what it's complaining about. Module build failed. No file or directory. So, I mean, I don't know if I, let's copy this directory, I guess. Jeez. And let's um, go into Finder, and we'll go, oh no, that's not Finder. We'll go to Go, go to Folder, type that in. Okay, so let's make sure that didn't just um, work, because we were already in there. Okay, yeah, so it goes into this, and then we see the index.js right there. So, I don't know. It's complaining about module build failed. 
no such file or directory. I mean, it's possible, right, that it's complaining about these import statements. So I guess let's let's like have like a console log one two three, and let's comment this out and see if it works. I guess. Oh, it could be because I didn't restart um, Webpack. Okay, I I mean I never know. <laughs> I really never know what's happening. Um, okay, so let's do that. Oh jeez, why can't you just work sometimes, huh? Huh, code? Why can't you just work sometimes? Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, we're getting a new error. This is wonderful. <laughs> this is awesome. Um. Oh, okay, we're so we're getting the same error that we got a couple times, like like a la last video, I guess. And this is, I believe, an error. Relative uh, to directory, so I think this is an issue. with Webpack. Um, okay, so I think what it's saying is that, okay, in our main kind of uh, web app code, node modules is insane, okay. In our main web app code, we have a config file, and it tells the compiler, okay, hey, this is what I want you to respect. I personally don't know what this means. I'm pretty sure it's a stand-in for, like, compile all the code down to, um, like, like make the ES6 code work as if it's ES5 code. But I'm not sure. It might be. It might be saying make all the ES7 code work like it's ES6 code. But anyways, it says something about that, right? Um, <laughs> and um, and I think what it's complaining about is that <clears throat> so in my switch.js library it has no idea how to compile this code so it's like it's, it's, it's running into this code and it's saying hey dude I don't know what you want me to do with this I think that that might be what it's saying so I guess let's try to create a Babel RC file in here. And we'll search for like Babel RC. <sighs> and I think, oh geez, I just want an example. <laughs> like I just, when I search for this, I just want something that I can work with. <laughs> I hate, I hate having to think, you know. Like I'm, I'm trying to do something else here, Babel. You know, like why can't you just work? So this is what I want. This, and so I'm, I have to go to this random guy's website. Uh, I think, whatever. This is fine. Okay, I, this makes <laughs> no sense to me. Um, like, okay, so we have presets, and then we have env, and then we have targets, and then we have another env thing. To, oh, this. Okay, okay, okay. So this is for this is the environment for the for the test. Oh, okay. Oh, th this this makes sense, kind of. So maybe like this is the default, right? And then this is like, hey, if you're in a special environment, do this stuff. But super, it's super confusing. I don't know how to make it simpler, but I just wish it was simpler. <laughs> I really, really do. Okay, so greater than 5% NBE. I don't know what that means. Yeah, oh, 
Oh, maybe that's like they like they really like this country, right? So this is like a country, I guess. And this is saying, hey, if the browser has greater than five percent market share in this country, then you know support that too. That's actually really cool. That's awesome. Because so like if your market's like mostly in the U.S. or like mostly in Canada or like you're a Canadian company and that's where you do most of your marketing. That's cool. Okay, so uh, uh, I don't care about uglifying it. I just want it to work. And I still don't know what this modules false does. Okay, so like Babel modules false. I feel like a lot of the things are named really weirdly. Uh, okay, so modules. But I, I mean, it's super powerful. It's a powerful library, whatever. Thank you, Babel, for being cool. Um, Okay, so you, so okay, there's a bunch of there, so like you might be using this library in the browser, you might be using it in Node, you might be using it in like a different build system that's not Webpack. So this is going to allow you to, like, um, you know, output different styles that will let your library be imported by different systems in different ways, and this will not transform modules. So I think if you have an import, it's not gonna do anything about it. I'm not sure. But I I don't know. I don't know if I'm okay with it or not. I guess I'll delete it. And it'll default to common JS. I should know what common JS is. I do not. What is common JS? Oh yeah. So I, I went to this page yesterday, <laughs> and I, yeah, I still don't know what it is. So I, it it has a defined keyword, and then oh, you can pass an an array to it as the first argument, and then each of these items in the array is going to match up to different functions, different like. Uh, sorry, different values that are returned from this function or maybe for multiple functions. So it gives you like a way to export multiple code in the browser in the browser. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, sure. <laughs> we'll target that one that we that we don't know about. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay, so let's restart this. See if that makes a difference. I really have no idea when I need to restart the build step and when I don't. Okay, so we're still getting this confined preset env, even though we have the Babel RC file. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know what to do. I guess. We can't even just have the simple things, like a console log, like literally, <laughs> I'm not upset. I'm not upset. But we just have a console log, and all, <laughs> all I want is to be include, and to, to include this module in a different, from a different library or a different, or a different web app. Uh, wh why? So I think the problem is webpack. I think webpack's like, hey, I gotta do some stuff with this and I don't know what to do, right? So I guess what I could do is look through some like node modules and be like, hey, why isn't it complaining about you? Um, I guess maybe it should be Maybe we we'll do like auto prefixer, because that's one word that we're including directly. And I don't know if that matters or not, but maybe it matters. So this doesn't have any Webpack stuff, which makes sense, because like why would Webpack shouldn't, <laughs> it shouldn't expect this, right? 
I, I think that doesn't make sense. Okay, so in your package JSON uh, bundle dependencies false. We got a bunch of people contributing to this. Dependencies deprecated false. Uh huh. Not a few keywords. I don't know. I'm not sure what it's doing differently. So I guess maybe if we look at the main, so it's lib auto prefixer, and auto prefixer is just a JS file, and it's got a function. And it has a module exports. I like. I wish. I. I really wish I understood. Like, w you know, why? Do, why do I use requ require? Why do I use module exports? I know this is like the old syntax, or not the old syntax. It's like what what Node currently uses. Um, but it's also like what what you. I think it's what some like bundlers use. And then require, I know that's used by br browserify. So I, I guess maybe they're using that. But I think it's also supported in browsers natively now. I'm not sure about that. Okay, so I, I'm not sure. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna search for this error again. Okay. So Okay, so I don't know, it's possible that's because we, we don't have, um, oh, okay, so let's see. So if I go into app.js and I comment this out, so I'm no longer including switch.js, uh, okay, it loads fine. So it is a problem with this. So if I go into maybe that stuff where it's like, hey, you need to upgrade all this stuff. Maybe that matters. Um, OK, so I think part of the issue is that I have this. So instead of like upgrading everything and risking going down a rabbit hole there, I'm going to just npm install, and this is a dev dependency, and I think it's babel preset, and I think it's just like that. And I should make this bigger so that you guys can see it. And I just tried to print it, I guess. Okay. So, yeah, keep going for the P key. Okay. So I'll make this big. Okay, so we're just going to try to install this. Maybe it works. Maybe it's not even a package name. I think it'll work. Looks like it's working. And then uh, we will uninstall this one. npm uninstall that thing. And, you know, our goal eventually would be to, you know, upgrade to the latest version. But this this code, you know, all this stuff I inherited from, you know, a different, uh, a different project. So 
I, I know it all works together, so I don't want to like mess around with it too much, you know, unless that's my total focus. Okay, so it's possible now I need to restart. I wish this was this had like a watch and it would restart every time, but I haven't set that up yet. Okay, so we, we have Babel preset env unsolved. Um, okay, let's get rid of this stuff because it's just kind of distracting now. Okay, so this presets. I, I really don't know. So if we, if we go into, I just want to make sure that it's still just this being the problem. So yeah, so that works fine. Can, okay, so let's, let's see. So I think, and relative to directory. And let's say like npm local module. I don't know. I don't know how to. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I'm just reading through this. Sort around. So it's possible that I should just upgrade Babel and hope for the best. Because I'm sure this got a lot of attention and it looks like there's no like super great solution. So it's possible that they fix this.
Jeez. This is like a nightmare. Like, honestly, like, 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 look at this, right? So this guy, this guy's like my solution, which is great works. And he has this like pipe, babble, and then the presets. I don't, it just, it feels off to me. It just feels so weird. Like, why? <laughs> why? Like, I... I just, I mean, I guess you just have to understand what that's going to do. But it just seems, it seems so hacky. Webpack in general just seems so hacky. Like, what is this? <laughs> like, I know what this is doing, right? Like, it's like, it's saying like, okay, for all the JS and JSX files, um, you know, include these paths. And then like use this loader to like parse all the files that you find in there. But like what is this? Uh okay. So So which version of Webpack do I have? Cause that could matter, right? So I have two, and it's on four now. I guess I guess I should up, update Webpack. This is just, it's a nightmare, right? Because it's like, why do I have to do this? I guess, yeah, I don't know. It just, it sucks. It really does. Because, okay, the issue is that I have all of this config already written. I don't know what's going to break now, right? When I upgrade Webpack and I upgrade Babel, like this stuff already works. I didn't write this code. You know, I kind of understand how it works, but like this auto prefixer, I don't know if it's going to work in the new version. Do I want it? Yeah, it would be great to have it. Extract text plugin. I know this is deprecated. So now I'm going to have to use the mini CSS text extract thing. And it's just like, all I want to do is have a local external dependency be included. Why, why do I have to go through all this trouble? just to do that. It's so annoying. So I, I guess like now I'm just gonna, like, cause all, all I wanna do is just have the external dependency working. So I'm gonna upgrade Webpack, I'm gonna upgrade Babel, I'm gonna delete all this deprecated stuff if it doesn't work, I'm gonna delete the auto prefixer, whatever, right? And then see if it works. If it works, that's great. And I'll, I guess I'll try to add the the stuff that I removed in later. Um, okay, so let's npm list of packages to update. How do I get this? I can get outdated. I mean, I know I can just do like npm uh, list. And that'll give me a bunch of information. Um, oh wait, no. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, let's look at this video. NPM outdated, maybe. <coughs> and then NPM update. Oh, this is so risky. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to update everything. <laughs> npm uh, update webpack. Let's see what that does. Okay. <laughs> Just like it doesn't tell me anything, and it didn't do it. <laughs> didn't do anything. npm update. Uh, I think it didn't do anything because this is, no, it says greater than, uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. 
So yeah, okay, so this says the current version, this says the wanted version. Oh man. I mean, do we just update everything and hope that it doesn't... <laughs> hope that it doesn't do anything? I know, I don't want to do that. I really don't want to do that. Okay, so I guess... Okay, we'll do, we'll do the npm update and then we'll do like at, then we'll do the, the latest version. And that should do something. <laughs> oh, it's a dev dependency. Maybe that matters? So maybe if I do, so, I mean, that probably matters, right? Nope. How do I update? Um, how to update local packages? Jeez. npm update single package. Sure. npm update. Okay, so save dev is necessary. That's funny. <laughs> uh, okay, so did I? I, I okay. Maybe I don't need this. I mean, not that it should matter, right? It shouldn't matter. I don't think it does anything. Okay, so yeah, okay, that, that makes sense. So you, you're like, yeah, so there's different notation for like what is gonna be allowed. And this, this is saying, hey, don't bump me up a major version. And this one's saying, hey, don't bump me up a minor uh, version, only give me patches, <coughs> I think. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's good to know, um, I kind of knew that, but no, I, you know what, I thought this did, I thought it allowed anything. So I guess what we're going to do is just go in here, and, well, what's the alternate syntax. What's the one that's like, just give me the latest one. Um, okay, so npm dependencies syntax. How to use semantic versioning. <laughs> Install. Okay, let's look at this. Stack Overflow is always fun. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so this guy's good, right? Must be greater than version. Version must master exactly compatible with version, approximately equivalent to version. Any version latest. So, like, what I really want to happen here. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I can just manually override it, right? So I'll just like do this and then the webpack CLI. I'll do this. I don't, I just, I don't know the best way to do it. Uh, the SAS loader, we'll do that. So yeah, okay. So what I, what I want to happen 
is to run a command that updates the latest version and then gives me all of these new ones, right? So like, I don't want to have to, I don't want to put a star in here because I don't always want the latest version. I just I want to get to the latest one and then I I don't want to have to cause too much trouble at that point, you know, in the future when I you know if I run npm update. Um, okay. So yeah, this is like pretty out of date. And it's kind of upsetting because the code that this is from is not that old. So, and like, I don't blame the code that this is from. I blame, I, don't, I guess I don't blame anyone. It's nice that everything is up to date. And like, people care about this stuff and they're constantly making improvements. I think that's nice. It's just, I wish there was just like a stable, like a stable, you know, way of doing things. But maybe things will calm down eventually. Um, so right now what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm just going to get everything in, uh, shoot. So yeah, I want the um, so I, I had it here. So we'll do Babel core. And we'll get this one. I oh, sorry, I just forgot what I was saying. Um preset. And okay, Babel loader. Let's see if I mean, maybe it's in here, but I want to make sure it's not uh, inside of the main repo now. Nope, okay. So it's just this one. Um, uh, okay, so I think we did everything. Let's go into our Minusfy2 app. Let's look at our changes. So I didn't change auto prefixer? I thought I did. I guess not. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So let's do npm install. Ay, ay, ay. Like, this is actually crazy, because all I want to do is build websites, and I have to do all this shit. It's like actually so crazy. I guess what I could do, if that was really the case, is not use any of these bundlers. I could just, like, who cares what people think of me for publishing, you know, non-ES6 compatible code or whatever, I could just use regular functions, no arrow functions, no import, no export, uh, export, just go back to the old way. I don't like that. I would, I would want import and export. I don't care about the fat arrow functions, although they're really nice too, and destructuring is nice too. Okay, I can't give it up. <laughs> I, guess, I guess I gotta do this. Okay. Uh, geez. Okay. So let's refresh. New terrible, terrible thing. What is happening? Oh, okay, we got an error. This is good. This is a good thing. Okay. Webpack optimize uglify.js plugin has been removed. Please use 
config that option. Uh, okay, so this is this is the case I was talking about where like things were gonna get messed up, and my solution was just gonna be to comment them out because I don't want to think about them right now. Um, I'm not even using this right now, so let's just comment it out. Okay, so I'm not sure. I think this doesn't automatically restart. Okay, chunk entry points. Use chunks, groups, iterable, and filter by instance of entry point instead. Yeah, sure, went back. Honestly, fuck you. What? It, what does this mean? Like, it's not in my code. <laughs> okay, so I think it's this. So we got, I don't know, entry. I thought this was fine. Entry, okay, so if we go into our other code that does kind of work. So let's close this node modules stuff. So yeah, this video has just turned into like, watch someone struggle with modern JavaScript development as if they're doing it for the first time. Um, yeah, sorry about that. If you're still watching, that's amazing. Um, okay, so entry, that's the same as this. So do I have like chunks anywhere? Does that word anywhere? <laughs> it's not. Uh, okay, so Okay, I think it's in I think it's in a um, a part of the code. Oh, oh, here it is. It's in the extract text plugin, which I said, which I was saying earlier, was deprecated. So it makes sense that that's having some issues, right? I guess let's replace it. I really, <laughs> I really don't want to, but I also want the separate CSS file. And maybe it has the same, just maybe it has the same kind of syntax. So, oh geez, if I go to, where was it? Switch.js and I go to the old code, I know I had it. Uh, Okay, so it's this one, and I'm going to npm install this, and it's going to be save dev. Okay, and then in my webpack config, I, I had it up here, so we're going to do that instead, onst. Okay, and then let's search for this. Nope, we can't search in this GitHub thing. Okay, so we're just going to do this as a loader. So I just have to look for the extract text plugin. Use, and it's just going to be inside of here. I hope so. I'm not sure. <laughs> So that's a possible issue. Um, and then we're just going to have uh, that. Uh, that's po it's possible. This is going to work. It's, po it's possible. <laughs> that's going to completely fail. OK. So let's do this. <laughs> Okay, so module build failed. Can I find? Did you mean? <laughs> of course, of course, Bevel. I meant this. I'm so, I'm so so sorry. Loader. Okay. Uh, Bevel preset. Bevel pre. No. Loader. Where 
I guess I think I had an example of this in my old code too. So I think it's just like this. Oh. Okay, that's all it wants. This is all I, so like honestly, like honestly, this is the truest thing I've ever said. I feel like this is what the like ancient Egyptians felt like. You know, like when they're worshiping like an ancient god and being like, oh please, Ra, like please grant me, you know, this boon. <laughs> I'm just like Webpack or uh Babel. Please. <laughs> just like what can I do? What can I do to appease you? And every time it comes back with like fuck you dude. Um but it's actually great for like, you know, job security because like you know i mean i gotta think i'm not like stupid i'm like eh like okay okay i am i am okay just as in the way that like everyone who's first starting out learning something is absolutely mind-bogglingly stupid but i got to imagine like there's a lot of people out there a decent amount of people out there trying to get all this stuff working and you know they're banging their head against it just as much as i am um, you know, and some of them are just like, hey, fuck this, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go ask, like, another person to help set this up for me, or whatever. Actually, that's probably a really good way to learn, now that I think about it. Yeah, they're probably ahead of me, because they went to someone more experienced, and they're just like, hey, you know, yeah. That's so much smarter than what I'm doing. But anyways, there's some people that probably don't have that, and then they're just like, I give up. And then I, I understand how to do this eventually, right? Not yet. And then, you know, increased job security or, like, increased productivity, ideally. The main problem with that, though, like, honestly, is that <laughs> the syntax and the way of doing things is going to change by next month. So it's really not increased. <gasps> what? <laughs> we got it. We got it. We got it. I'm like honestly about to cry. Like, cause like, honestly you look at this and it's like, is there an error? <laughs> like, I guess it's not red, right? Or I mean, was there? No, so this isn't red either, right? So there's no, I mean, there's no way to tell. So it's just like, this is working, I got the warning about the mode, whatever, right? And then there's, there's this, or, in the, or there's this, right? But it worked! <laughs> this honestly, like, webpack, you gotta work on your shit, cause like, I, I'm not, I'm not telling you guys what to do. Like, honestly, you're the bomb. I know I can, I've been complaining a lot about it, and like saying you're like an ancient, you know, God, is it God or Goddess, Ra? But anyways, like, no. Like, you guys are, keep doing what you're doing. Someone's going to write, like, a simple web pack for people like me, and it's going to be based on your awesome work. So, like, don't even trip, you know? But, in like, from a technical perspective, you know, like, if I'm developing, like, a real web app in production, I'm not just doing these, you know... I mean, I am doing that, but, like, if, you know, I, I just want to get, like, a simple console log working right i don't need all these details but like if i'm build, if, if like this is part of my like web app build this is great stuff to know like how big is this how big is that like you know how long did it take you know there's another plugin that i think i can do from that like which files did it touch that's great to know but honestly like for the simple version whoever's going to build simple win pack for, for me get rid of all this shit all i want to know is like one line it worked like, it worked in green, exclamation point. And if it didn't work, show, like, it didn't work, exclamation point, in red. And then just, like, a single line that just says, like, do this. <laughs> go here. Go to this URL and type in, copy and paste the commands from this URL into your terminal. 
Honestly. Oh, God. Okay. So, anyways, we got it to work. That's awesome. Console log one, two, three. Boom. You know what we're going to do? We're going to uh, go to our index.js file, uncomment all this shit, and we're going to refresh. Oh. Wait. Should I delete this? Oh, man. Oh. Okay, so I guess it doesn't just auto-update. I mean, oh, you know why? You know why? Because I don't, I don't have watching set up yet in this project. So I need to, all I need to do is restart this. I do want to get the watching stuff set up. But for now, whatever. Oh, jeez. It's not that. Okay. Uh, okay, so if I go into the Artify app and I go into Node Modules and I go into Switch JS. Oh, you know what it is? Okay, wait, wait. Let's go into Switch JS. So I think it's going to be. Or, oh, <laughs> I know the alphabet. Um, if I go into here, yeah. It's the same, it's the same file. So what is happening is that it's not detecting the change. It's not detecting the change because this is in the node modules file and it's like, you're the same version, right? Package JSON is the same version. So I don't need to look at you again. I don't need to look at your code. I don't need to import you again. You're the same thing. So. I don't know. Is that, is that what's happening? I think that's what's happening. It's like, hey, this is version one. And if I look inside of my package JSON and I look at switch, no, it doesn't. It's not, it doesn't have a version here. But it's possible that it's still looking at the version. But then how would it know? Okay, well, okay. The, if the theory is correct, then if I go in here and I change this uh, to 1.01, and then, you know, I, I, I never know if I need to restart it or not, so I'll just restart it. Then that should work. So this is still getting the old code from Switch.js, even though I am including this library here and it's linked in from a file. Oh, I don't know. Mm. Oh, 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 that's great. Oh, this is great. Okay, okay. So what's happening is it's like, dude, I, okay, I should, sorry, this is my bad. I should have checked this first. This is great. This is awesome. Yeah. So it's not just totally messing with me. Um, I wish these errors showed up in the console, um, but I understand. Uh, so yeah, it's just like, hey, dude, we couldn't compile this. This is a compile error, a transpiling error, right? So of course it's not going to show up in the console. Um, no, I don't agree with that. I think it should show up in the console. You know what I think it should do? I think it should transpile it anyways, as best as it can. And when it, if it runs into an error, skip it, right? And then like in the console, say like, hey, dude, we couldn't find this file. We couldn't find this file. We couldn't find this file. And then also like, when you tried to call this code, this is not a function, this is not a function, this is not a function. That would be great. But anyways, this is perfect. So this is exactly what we expected. Hey dude, this isn't defined, this isn't there, so we can't do anything. And then, yeah, since it didn't transpile, since, since, it, didn't, since it didn't finish the transpilation, transpilation step, it just stuck with the old code. It's like, hey, this is the last working version, right? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I could go either way on whether it should do that or not. I think not, right? I don't currently have working code, so why is it? Okay, so anyways, it's possible that I don't even need this. 
that I didn't need to change that, that I was getting that error before. It, which I think I was. I think I, yeah, I think I was getting the error for a while, and I just didn't realize. Okay, so, boom, 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 let's do it. So now we have, uh, <laughs> you know what I need? I need a file to keep track, and I do this every once in a while, and then I delete it later because I decide to work on something else. But I just wanted to do, just to keep track of all these thoughts rattling in the back of my head of like things that I've deleted or undone that I want to redo later. So I think actually this might be working. Yeah, for some reason I, I, I forgot that we did that. And this, yeah. Ooh, like honestly, if the if the upgrade just went that smoothly, I mean, obviously we have we still have the mode error, right? Where it's like cage, hey, you know, say a mode. I don't know what that's about. I mean, I do know what that's about, but I don't know how to do that the right way. But yeah, okay, so this is working. So I don't need this to do, but I'll leave it up for now because there's probably going to be some stuff that you know later on. Okay, so we go into our switch.js code. We don't have any changes. Let's go into our artistify2 app, and let's say what we did. We updated our dev dependencies. Why? Why is why is the CSS different? Oh, I don't even know. Oh, oh, oh. No. Well, this is a completely new file. Uh, and it's in the dist. I don't know. I'm going to commit it anyways. I don't care at this point. I'm just happy that this is working and I'm going to stay focused. Oh, oh. It's using the different CSS extract plugin. So, app. Oh, and it's not, it's not uh, caring about this thing that I passed him, which was really sad. But I, yeah, I mean, I don't, I didn't know that if the syntax was similar or not. So I think if I want to fix this, I'm just going to try it real quick. I know this is a distraction, but I'm going to do it anyways. Um, how do I specify the file name for this? So we got plugins, file name. So yeah, that's simple. So we're going to go into here. We're going to go into here. We're going to say file name. I think it's just like that. File name. Why isn't this name? Oh, because is file name one word? I don't know. I want it to be camel cased, but yeah, I'll take what I can get. Um, is file name one word? Okay, so do, 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 do. did this recompile? It should, right? Because the assets is on watch. So I think like, oh wait, no. No, no, okay, so the issue so when I need to restart Webpack, if I edit the Webpack config, I always need to restart Webpack. I don't even think there's like a watch tool for that. There might be though. Um, no, there probably is. There's something for everything. But the, like if I edit styles or I edit the JavaScript code, I think that should watch and recompile, right? Because if I go into package JSON, we have this thing here node mon start ignore public. I don't know if node mon automatically restarts, but it's called watch and watch always means that it restarts. So I would think it does. Okay, so do 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 file name. We got the file name. We, we do have to restart. Um, <coughs> Let's go into here. File. So it's, I guess it's possible that it's compiling. Well, let's try changing these CSS. And 
So we, for that, we go into public, we go, I don't know, SAS, we go into here, let's just uh, delete that, save that. <laughs> oh, that's just, <laughs> that's just what I did. Um, oh, you know what? It's not. <laughs> it's not even doing the compilation step <laughs> because um, my other code. Uh, okay, no modules. That's annoying. Okay, so I'm gonna just undo or redo. Nope, I'm just going to comment this out, out. And the reason why I put a console log here is because I'm, I'm afraid that if there's nothing in the file, it's not even going to include any of it, so it's not going to compile it. But it's kind of like this thing in the back of my head, like maybe it won't, maybe it will. I should probably test it otherwise, but... Uh, okay, so that all worked. Let's look at our compilation code. <gasps> Yes, okay, so it works if I discard this app.css stuff and then and then I, well, let's show the diff here. Okay, so yeah, this is the old file we were using too. It's just compiling it different and maybe, maybe it's, shorter. Oh, yeah, it's ugly. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. But it's using the same file name. That's all I care about. So now if I go into the styles, if I delete this and save and switch over to this real quick, can I see that it recompiled this? I think it did, but I'm not sure. So let's uncomment it. And switch back. I, th I think it just did. <laughs> That's silly, right? Yeah, so we got 41 kilobytes there and we got 136. So this, you know, this very verbose output is useful after all. Okay, so um, uh, so we got that. So we know that it's recompiling, so I just want to make sure that that old app CSS isn't coming back. Perfect. Okay, so we've got the package JSON. We upgraded, so let's just say like we upgrade, up, updated all dev dependencies, Babel. That way, you know, I actually really appreciate that that was so simple to do. It wasn't that hard. Um, Babel loaders webpack, etc. Okay, and then that's doing its thing. Oh, this is now like being more egregious with the stuff it's adding. So like you see this web 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 kit box pack. I think that's not needed. I think all these web pack things aren't needed. Although, I don't know. I'll just leave them. Whatever. Okay. So we got this, we got that, we got that. We deleted this. Okay. And we should, as the first thing, we'll say like added external switch.js. And that's what we wanted to do. That's awesome. Right? Okay. So we're going to push that out. So now Whew, what are we doing next? Next, let's just get our all our other libraries working, right? So, so we have um, the uh, okay. So let's get rid of this. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Um, we have the package JSON. We don't even have anything in here, right? I mean, it's pretty simple. And then we have. the license, the index file, uh, git ignore. We don't even really need to ignore node modules, but we will. And then git attributes, okay. 
I think that's fine. Okay, so you know what we're going to do? We're going to just copy this switch.js and um, what's the next uh, thing we want to add? So let's add bling. So we'll do bling and let's call it something else because I think um, I think it's different enough now to call it something else. Uh, and we can say like inspired, inspired by Wes Boss, and there's that other guy at Google, um, box sizing. He always comes up like first on on the search. Paul Irish. Okay, so uh, code inspired by, and I think. Paul Irish was the first one to come up with it. So we'll put that on top uh, at the top of our <coughs> uh, blink bling code. Let's um, I don't know why I feel it, like it's necessary to have all these folders open in here. So we're gonna delete that. We're gonna put this at the top of our, our new bling. And actually <laughs> actually uh, can I rename this here? Okay, so yeah. So what are we going to call it? Um, I mean, I guess we could look at like what, what is currently coming up for Bling.js. What? <laughs> There's a Bling.js framework? Okay, I got to look at that. Okay, so we got this one from Paul Irish. The code. Oh, this was cool that he did this because I felt like this was a really bad practice. But I mean, Paul Irish. This is from 2015, huh? Okay, so Bling.js. We have this guy. M Meta Fox. Okay. <clears throat> uh -huh. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good point, but um, I'm not going to use any jQuery libraries. I like the word, the word alias. That would be a cool name for it. But I think it's just like, let's just call it bling, even though it's not bling. But I do want to maybe publish it. I'm gonna call it query, <laughs> query alias. <laughs> that is a stupid name. Uh, yes, it is. Query JS. That's gonna be taken. I mean, I don't care if it's taken, right? Let's call it something, right? Uh, bling is a fine name, but I don't want to like say that this is the official bling, you know. Um, and I'm just gonna be using this locally dollar sign? I don't know. I kind of like query. What, what was the thing I said? Query parser? What did I say? Uh, no, honestly, I don't remember. Um, query. Okay, wait. I was talking about playing. Oh, the uh, framework's dead. Oh, alias. Query alias. Because it, cause it's an alias for query selector all. It could be query selector alias or QS alias. Query alias is hard to say, but it's okay, right? Query alias. That's a stupid name. Uh, how about just like dollar sign? No, that's stupid. Bling is a good name, but... Um, It's not a polyfill. How about just like Dom, Dom something. D O 
um, document object model. No. jQuery Lite. Um, query, query selector. I like alias. I'm gonna just go with alias JS. <laughs> um, it's a stupid name. Also, it didn't it didn't work. Why didn't it work? Why didn't the rename work? It did work. Okay. Okay. So now we go in here, and we're just gonna paste our code from data.js. Because I think that's the latest. Okay, so if we go, if we just, um, I just want to make sure, yeah, this one doesn't have the break and this one has the apply. So I think this is the latest. I don't really need this ES lint disable line because I don't use a linter right now, but I'm just going to leave it there. It's like, it's like a small hope. You know, it's like, maybe someday I'll use a linter. Maybe someday I'll get there. Okay, so that looks good. Let's go into... So I can I can get rid of that. Get rid of this. Okay, so the, the license is fine. I'm going to delete this lock, because I think that's going to be generated again for us. Um... It could be like query JS. Alias is kind of a stupid name because it's not like it's not aliasing anything. Query JS. I like query JS. Let's search for query JS online. Query JS, and let's also search for switch JS because eventually I would like to. Publish this library. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, I mean, of course, they're both taken. I'm just going to namespace them then. Okay, so query JS. I'm pretty sure this is going to be updated. Yeah, it's not updated. So I think it's the same folder. But I'm just gonna add it back in. Okay, so we got query JS. Um, what are we gonna? What are, what does this do? Um, stand in for jQuery. Uh, like a do stand in. Sure. So stand in for jQuery. We got the index JS. We got MIT license. That's by me. And it can't save the package with JSON. Okay. So I'll copy that. <coughs> Okay, cool. So that should work. So if we so now if we could just go into our Artify app and we um well, we'd have to go back a lot, huh? Okay. So we got query JS. Query DOM JS? That's decent. Okay. Let's do that. And that should work. Oh, and geez. This is a pain, right? Because okay, so not only am I gonna have to do this here, I'm gonna have to go into switch JS and I'm gonna have to do the same the same thing. <laughs> Okay, uh, so let's paste this in. Okay, so now in, why is this? Okay, so now in switch.js, I got package.js, query.js, cool, cool, cool. So in index.js, I can uncomment this and Instead of bling, I'm going to call this query.js. <coughs> um, 
Okay, so uh, that looks fine. I do want QueryJS in here eventually, but I don't really care about it right now. All I want to get is Switch.js working, so in the future I'm not going to install anything inside of the Artify app. I'm because I've already handled the installing switch.js in there and that's the that's the only one I care about right now. Right? Okay, so um, let's just get these other ones working. So we we have DOM utils. I'm just gonna call them DOM utils. Because I'll namespace everything under you know my npm username. Okay, so let's create a new folder. And we'll call this DOM utils. And then let's create another new folder for um, parse data attributes. And then another one for helpers is string and then, uh, yeah, whatever. I guess we'll do one for helpers. <laughs> it feels kind of stupid. What is, uh, what's in helpers? Is string a number for each attribute dash to camel case, camel case to dash. Sure. One for helpers. And we can always split that up later. Okay, so we'll copy that and we'll have helpers. Okay, so now we have helpers, DOM utils, parse data attributes. These are the three that we need in order to get this working. Let's drag these in here. Let's bring them up to the top. And we have the latest versions um, inside of here. Okay, so this I do want to keep temporarily. Um, I don't know. I'm already gonna, already gonna have that code. Okay, so if I go in data.js, the first one I want to do is parse data attributes because I'm gonna work backwards. Okay, so we got parse data attributes. Oh yeah, this is a mess. Okay, so let's copy it in first and then we'll clean it up. <coughs> Yeah, this should really be organized a lot better. But I'm not going to do that right now because I just want to get the switch.js library working. Um, but yeah, like these should be able to be imported separately. Uh, this should be in a separate file. This other parse function should be in a separate file. This should be in a separate file. These should definitely not be there. So I'm going to remove that. Um, and I'm just going to put like parses, strings that can have multiple arguments or parameters embedded and subparameters. That's a pretty good description. So now we've got parse data attributes. Now all we need to do is name this and attributes. And we're gonna, oh, that's good that we wrote this. I wasn't even thinking about it. Okay. And then MIT, MIT, dot, dot, dot. Okay, cool. So <coughs> we got parse data attributes. Let's do DOM utils next. We'll delete all this code. We'll go down here to our DOM utils. Okay. So, oh wait, did did um, parse data attributes depend on anything? Did I use any external code for this? I didn't. That's pretty cool. Okay. So. Um, 
So actually, what am I using the dollar sign? I'm not even using bling, uh, bling or I should say query JS in here. So that's awesome. That's really cool. Um, great. I don't need this anymore. Uh, this all looks uh, good. And I'm going to go into this and I'm going to say DOM utils. And what does it actually do? Um, it's for like traversing the DOM and getting, uh, getting traverse the DOM and it's like getting position attributes or something. I'm going to just see what the description of this is in MDM. MD. MDN. Okay. Position, the size. Hmm. Uh, property. Okay. Maybe properties. Traverse the DOM and get element properties. Okay. Um, that looks good to me, and I, yeah, okay, so now we've got helpers, we go in here, let's close this, let's go down here to get our helpers code, and, oops, there we go, we got that, and, uh, we'll close that, we'll go back up to helpers, we'll do helpers, and where is this like parse it's not parse strings um manipulate this is kind of a dom util not a helper so i'm going to change it it's going to tell me at some point um Looping over attributes, um, elements, attributes. So it's going to tell me at some point, like, hey, this is we didn't find this in helpers, and I'm going to have to remember that I moved it to DOM utils. But that's fine. Um, and this should really actually be called like string functions. So let's let's call this like string functions and then like helpers to test and mani manipulate strings uh, and we'll save that and I'll, I'll remove this because I want to rename it string functions okay and we'll drag that. Ooh. Is it not moving? There. <laughs> okay. So we got that. We got string functions. That looks great. Okay. So now this is exciting. Um, we're going to go in here. We're going to go into our switch.js. We're going to npm install dot dot uh, dom utils awesome okay so now I should be able to uncomment this um, this is this is going to be called oh geez sorry okay and this is going to be called parse data attributes and so let's npm install parse data attributes oops oh that's interesting well that's not out there yet 
Okay. A string a number. And this is going to be from our renamed uh, string functions. And let's do that. Boom. Okay. So now we should be able to do that. And I just want to make sure that I didn't get anything wrong up here. Query.js, DOM utils, parse data attributes, string functions. That looks good. Um, and we'll remove this console log. Okay, so let's see what happens. Uh, we should be all set for local development. Oh my goodness, this is exciting. It worked. It worked. Okay, so we're not publishing our NPM packages yet. We might eventually. But now we have a bunch of local dependencies that we can work with in our project, update them independently, use them in other projects, and voila, right? And test them separately. So like now we can add tests, we can bundle them, we can do whatever we want with them. That is so sweet. How big is this file, honestly? I wish it would t tell me the size. This is pretty big. Um, okay, so I guess we can look. Let's look at how big that file is. Is it is it right here? Is this where it's compiled to? Or does it? No, that's three kilobytes. What is this file? Oh, that's for the backend code. Sorry, I just want to make sure I don't have any secret stuff in here. No, okay. So it should be, I think, in public. No, because this is all the stuff that is compiled. Oh, disk? Okay. Oh, 44 kilobytes. That's not too bad. I want to keep it like under 80, maybe 100. I could, I could, I could, I could be okay with like 100 or 150 later on. Um, but ideally, it's under 80. And ideally, I think, yeah, that's, I think over 100, like over 120, that's, that's a lot, you know, especially from mobile to download that just to like view a website. Okay, so we're going to say, oh, yeah, let's add, let's add them here too, if we need them. Um, and then we can finish up. Okay, so if we go into our artistify code, <clears throat> so we go in here and we go into our public folder and JavaScript. We have these utils. We have bling, DOM utils, helpers, and parse data attributes, which are now going to be existing outside of the app. If I look in here, we, none of them are in there. Uh, okay. So we have, or do we have bling in here? We don't have bling. Okay. So let's, um, let's first just install them. So we can run this, the same code that we just ran here. But I'll just, I'll just do it manually. Okay. Um, so we want this, I don't think we want the string functions. Um, <clears throat> let's see if I'm using the helpers because it was called helpers before and I, and I'm not. So I'm going to delete that. Okay. So I don't need that. I do want. Um, 
you tell us, I believe. Yeah. Uh, no, because this isn't copy layout. Okay, I do use it there. I guess I use it one place. Okay, so let's do down utils. Hmm. It's weird that it takes so long. Okay, so we got down utils. Uh, oh yeah, we want the query JS. Did I already do that? I think I already did that. And then um, parse data attributes. I don't think I need that either. And I'm going to delete copy layout from here because I also want to make that a separate thing. Okay. Um, and we're going to delete this. And we're going to delete this. And we're going to delete this whole folder. Okay, so now... Um, yeah, I don't need anything else. Okay, so now we're going to import this from uh, query JS. And we can copy that. And this is going to be DOM utils. I kind of miss the bling thing. The, the name, I kind of miss the name. <laughs> I don't really like QueryJS as much. But, oh, it's fine for now. Okay. So now if I do that, let's see um, <clears throat> if everything works. Uh, I'm going to search, but first I'm just going to search real quick to see if bling is anywhere in here. Okay. Uh -huh. What is this? Do, 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 go all the way to the bottom of this crazy thing. I saw a match up here though. What is this? Bling? Oh. Okay. Do, do, do. Oh. We got some stuff here. <laughs> what is this? Oh, enabling, enabling, okay, well, enabling, okay, disabling, <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, maybe I should have done a different search, <coughs> yep, yeah, I got some of those again, so the reason why I'm just going through this so fast is it's just kind of a cursory thing, like, it doesn't really matter if there's bling in here somewhere, I'll remove it eventually. Um, okay. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is all like in a folder or a file called like original, and that means that it's like the original code that I'd, I'm not going to use anymore. Okay, so um, that is good. Let's refresh. Let's check to see if it's working. It's working. I don't really know if there's anything that that is re re relying. Oh yeah, okay, so there's this stuff. So the mobile guide, the mobile guide shows up, the mobile layout, transitions. So we know that the new QueryJS library is being included and it's working. <coughs> awesome.
Okay, so I'm going to finish up for today. Uh, it's been two hours now. Um, so let's just... Uh, let's just say, like, switched some files to local modules, or switched some imports to local modules um, instead of including the raw files. Uh, yeah, okay. So that works. And then we're going to go into data.js. Let's see what changed with this. Yeah, okay. I changed that. I changed, I removed some of that. I changed that to dev. And I added a pa package JSON. Um, I'm fine with that. So just like, I'll just say like clean up. Um, I actually like don't care about this code anymore. Okay, so switch JS. Okay, so this is, um, what can I say, like, I guess switched, or like, got local module working, or got it working as a local module. <coughs> okay, and then... Cool, okay, so now I just want to commit this other code that I created. So we have switch.js, let's do uh, dom utils. Dom utils. Um, we'll do that. We'll see. Package index. Why doesn't it have the license file? Because I have the license in there. Is it get ignore? No. Oh what? Wait. Um. Oh my god. What? What just happened? I just changed the name of it. This is so stupid. What just? Oh, what? Where? Oh, geez. Removed all except main. I didn't just undo all of that. It was just. I thought I was just creating a new repository. Where is this code? This is DOM utils. Okay. Oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. Okay, let's. So it's because I have my git. I copied my git folder when I was doing all those copies. So. Um, I don't know how, I guess, so the first thing is let's just go up, let's go into, so switch.js is going to be the only one that is right, and these three, four, these four are going to have its git repository, so we're going to go into DOM utils first. And then we're going to remove um, the Git repository. OK. And I'm going to just do that. 
Okay, and then we're going to do at the level, we're going to go into uh, parse data attributes, and then we're going to do the same thing to the git repository, or to the git folder. <coughs> okay, and now we're going to go into query.js and remove that one. And then we're going to go into string functions and finally remove that one. Okay, so now if I go back to GitHub, uh, okay, that's fine. And this one, okay, so that we have the switch.js library. Yep, yeah, everything's fine. Okay, so now we should just have to do what we just did, but we're just gonna do new repository. Let's go into, uh, let's just do these in order. So we'll just do, is it just these four? It's just those four. So we'll do st string functions first. It's in there. We don't need that stuff. Let's undo this initial commit. Um, we have all that stuff. Okay, let's just do initial commit. We'll publish this, keep it private, and we'll go into query.js. Create. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna let it auto commit. And we'll do this one. And I think Dom Utils is the last one. Oh, and I didn't I didn't publish the the last couple. Yeah, okay. So we publish Dom Utils. Do we I think we it should show me, I think, maybe nope. Doesn't show me yet. Ah, oh, jeez, which one didn't I do? <laughs> okay, so I'm in Dom Utils. I think I did the parse one. Or isn't it? It's called parse data attributes. Where is it? Oh, okay, here it is. Oh, okay, that's good. So all the ones that aren't published are down are down in that area. That's cool. So go down here. Go to QueryJS. Publish that. Okay, so that should be everything. Everything is synced. We don't have any code that needs to be committed that isn't. Um, we have the local modules working. That was exactly what we wanted today. Um, you know, bundling is something, you know, I want to work on next, but first I would just like to, you know, continue working on these libraries. Um, the next library I'm going to be working on is called input output. Uh, I might rename that or I might split it up into multiple, I'll probably split it up into multiple. One will be maybe like data dash input. Another one will be data dash output. Um, and that should simplify greatly the Artisfy code, as I've been promising. Parse DOM. Yeah, OK. So yeah, this this is all my like input output code. I don't even remember writing this. Yeah, OK. So. We're going to want to be working with parse DOM. Uh, let's delete this thoughts file. Um, and let's just like set ourselves up. Uh, I'll call this code sharing research and I'll dump it in the archive. So the to do, I just want to set us up for, um, for next time. So 
um, I think, so it's just going to be like start writing uh, data input and data output libraries. Um, I don't know. I, I also want to like add something like, hey, add those tests back into your modules, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. We'll worry, like, we're pretty sure it's working. We added the test before. We're not planning on changing it that much. It is risky, but I'm working with a lot of things at once right now. So I'm just going to stay focused and try to get these libraries all out. So um, look in the parse DOM folder for starting code. I think that's true, but let's look real quick inside of data.js. Oh no, I have it here. So I actually don't know why I need this parse DOM folder anymore. Oh, I had some brainstorms. How would radio buttons work? Considerations, io.pug, parse examples, thinking about parse DOM and other widgets. Spent a lot of time on this. Um, I think this is mostly fine. It's nice to have um, this. So I think I'm gonna, so like data output um, considerations. And I'm going to copy this into um, <coughs> data.js, which is our latest, right? So I'll paste that there. Um, I don't really need this. It's kind of good to have. experiment yeah okay so I already implemented that I think yeah I think I'm all I'm like pretty up to date with this stuff so I don't think I need that that anymore and then the artify 2 static code Oh yeah, that was for the W test. Okay, so I don't need this anymore either. We're moving on from that. And so we're gonna need the the real app soon, but um, I think we just need this. Ooh, sorry, just gotta chill. Okay, so yeah, so we'll just start from here. Um, and we have like some starting notes on this somewhere, uh, like get notes on input, uh, on data input, input, um, I don't know, organization, uh, functionality. Okay. So we're going to do that. Uh, I think this is fine. Okay, so that's that's all I'm gonna I'm gonna do for now. Um, we have a to do set up for next time. Um, we have a bunch of local modules that we're using. We're gonna publish those eventually under a namespace, and we're gonna add better tests for them. But uh, yeah, I mean, so we have the switch library working. That's exciting. We have these other things working. I guess the main things, oh, I forgot. So there's one more thing. So I'll be right back. We're going to do one more thing today. Okay, so I'm going to just work for 10 more minutes, hopefully. I, rem I just remembered that I removed the copy layout plugin from here because I wanted to create it as an external module. <coughs> and I just wanted to go through real quick the main plugins that are going to help Artify work are the copy layout, <coughs> the switch JS, the input, the data input code, and the data 
output code. And <clears throat> Copy Layout and Switch.js work together to help inline editing be more efficient. Uh, Switch.js just handles like a lot of the switches, a lot of the buttons, a lot of the widgets on the page that are just going to pop in, pop out, show over, uh, show like popovers, show modals, whatever. Data input is all about, okay, we have, you know, these inputs on the page or radio buttons or choices or whatever. Whenever you click those, it's going to update the, pa the page's data directly on the page. And then data output is going to go and collect all of the data from the page, send it to the server, or, you know, it's just going to collect all the data. And then a separate section of the code is going to send that data to the server, that collected data to the server. And then, and then that's it. And what that's going to allow us to do is we're not going to have to write any complicated code about like, you know, on the front end, right? We have a library for like reorganizing, say like things in a list, right? So you have a list, you can eat, you can edit each item in the list. You can delete each item in the list and you can reorder each item in the list. And the, like one of the main issues with that is that, okay, so say you're sending that information to the back end. You have to send an ID along with the item that's edited, if it's edited. If you delete it, you have to send its ID and you have to have a separate delete method. And if you, <coughs> if you um, reorder it, you have to have the ID of the, of the one that was moved and then to the new position that it was moved to. And it's like a, all a lot of like complicated code. And then there's other issues too, but like that's a, that, even just that is a key issue. And if you have multiple things on the page that are all reordering, there's just the potential for a lot of bugs. So what data output does is it's just like, I don't care about any of that. Whatever is on the page is what I'm gonna to send to the server, right, as far as the data goes. And it's just the data, so it's expecting a certain format, right? So you, you're not really gonna, you're not opening yourself up to like an attack because you're not accepting it as anything else other than the data that it's supposed to be. Um, but but you don't have to write all that reorder code, all that delete code, especially for like every component, right? Every component is just going to know how to bundle itself all up into this one data package, send it to the server, and boom, you're done. So these these four libraries are going to make it much easier for <coughs> for me to develop Artify and you know features for Artify and also other web apps in the future. Um, and I'm going to be the only one that knows how to use them correctly. Uh, no, hopefully, ideally, a lot of people are going to be able to use them. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, let's create a new, or no, let's copy our, um, I guess our Switch.js. No, let's copy just... I guess the switch.js is fine. So let's copy this, paste it, and let's say this is like copy layout, and then let's not forget to remove the uh, git directory from in here. Okay, and so now if we load this up, um, we can call this copy layout, um, we'll wait on a documentation string. I think we do want all of these things. I'm not sure if we need string functions. Uh, let's go into our index file. Let's delete this. Let's delete the package lock. And yeah, every, that's all fine. Okay, so now let's go into data.js. I think this is the latest code. I'm pretty sure. I guess I could make I could make sure of this by going into data.js. Um, added uh, docs, and we're gonna just copy. The code from Artisfy 2. Oh, we don't have the copy layout function in, in there. Anyway, okay, so I guess we're just going to have to rely on this being the latest code. I'm pretty sure that it is. 
I'm pretty sure. Ah, uh, jeez. Okay, I guess let's go into Artist Fight 2 app and just see. So I deleted it. I think I deleted it here. Yeah, okay, I deleted it there. What did I do in the steps before? Copy layout. Okay, I don't know. This looks the same. Can I... Can I get this code? Oh, jeez. How do I see the see it at this revision? <coughs> View. Blah. Okay. So that's the original code I I added for copy layout. And I, and I didn't modify it after that, and then I just removed it. So the only issue is that maybe I added it, and then I modified it in the same time. So we're going to test that by pasting this over and saving it. And let's see in data.js if there are any changes. OK, and there's none. There's no changes. OK, so I'm just going to discard that. <coughs> Um, so now I'm in data.js, copy layout, we'll paste this in there. It doesn't matter really which one it was, because <laughs> they're both the same. Uh, and in package.json, we don't need the string functions. And we don't have an, or we do have a node modules in here. I don't know. I don't think this specifies like what it belongs to. So I think it's fine to just leave it there. But I'm just going to delete it anyways and reinstall just to be safe. I don't know. I think it's probably fine actually either way. So we'll just do an npm install. Um, okay, so now we've got those in there, um, and so now we can, I think it's called uh, query.js, this, this name really isn't growing on me, because it's like, what kind of query? Uh, Dom, I think Dom query, Dom query would be a better name for it, but I'm not going to re rename it at this point. Okay, so Dom utils. And we have parse data attributes. Okay, so that should work, right? And so if we just, I guess the only way to test it is by including it. So let's install it in our app. Um, okay, so we're gonna do npm install dot dot slash copy layout I think that this is yeah okay we just don't have a description we can get that from here yeah decision is that the layout of the target element to the visit to the layout of the clicked element. Okay. <coughs> okay. Do do do. We got that. So now we're gonna want to include copy layout somewhere. I guess we just add it here. Oh, and this is no longer general, so I don't know. To toggle states on elements. And copy layout from clicked to target element. 
That is such a better documentation string. Okay, and we're going to import copy layout and reload and we'll make sure we're compiling too. Okay. So we go back into the code. Oh. I didn't realize I still had that in there. Okay. So we'll reload. I just want to see what happens if I like just have some like random stuff in here. So this is gonna cause an error. So it causes an does it cause an error here? What? Should it not cause an error? Import. Oops. Okay, cannot resolve. And But this is still gonna work. That's so weird. Okay, so now if I shut down Webpack and open it up again, it's gonna say, can't resolve this, but if I refresh this, it still works? That's so annoying. I mean, I guess at least it surfaces that. But that's so annoying, it shouldn't, I don't know. I, uh, I think earlier maybe I said like it should work. I, I'm not sure, but I think it shouldn't work. That's so weird. Now nah, whatever. Okay. So yeah, okay, that's all we're gonna do for now. Let's add our new copy layout library. And we're just gonna publish that. And we're gonna go into our app and we're just gonna say we added the copy layout. Um, added copy layout library back in as a local module. So I mean the issue with it not, with it like still kind of working is that I, I'm never sure if it's like using the old code or the new code. So like if I click this, you know, it, it works ostensibly, but you know, if it's using the old code, that doesn't matter. But, you know, I'm pretty sure at this point, I mean, it has to be using the new code at this point. So, so yeah, so that's working. Okay, sweet, awesome, perfect. I'm done for today. Um, I will, you know, maybe see you later tonight, but uh, I'm done for right now. It was fun. I hope you learned something. Thank you for watching any part of this video. Um, and next time, I promise, I hope that it's true, <laughs> that we're going to get to the input and output libraries, and maybe I can take you on a little tour of what those are going to do. I'm still not sure the output library is going to be efficient enough um, to actually use in production. I, you know, I'm hoping that what it does... Oh, shoot, you know what else we need to do? I just remembered. Um, open result to do. So we need to um, change all the old widget code on Artisfy, in, in the Artisfy app. Um, copy position, 
and switch. Yeah, so we'll do that. Um, I don't know. I mean, maybe we'll just focus on the data.js because we know that the switch library works. So we don't need to focus on that right now. So anyways, I want to take you through just kind of like how I envision <coughs> the input and output library working. As I was saying, I'm not sure that output library is efficient enough to use in production, but I'm very, very, very hopeful that it's going to take like under 30 milliseconds to like run through the entire page. It's like it, it has to go through almost all of the DOM elements, which is unfortunate. But I'm confident that it can go through all of those and parse the data attributes for maybe like, it might, it might be up to like 300 different nodes. And I think it can do that in under 30 milliseconds. And if that's the case, it's not gonna be really that noticeable to the user. And so I'll be able to like, whenever someone clicks the save button, send all of the data to the back end. Um, but, you know, if it doesn't work that way, maybe, you know, I use the input output library slightly differently and I just bundle up like one, you know, section of the app at a time. That's not ideal. Or maybe what I would do is um, change everything around so that like this just like live updates and there's no save button. So you just have like maybe like a done button or something. And then at the top of the page, you have like a save button. And that like, you know, shows like a little loading indicator. So, you know, if, if, if the output library takes, you know, let's say it's like a second, right, to like send the data to the back end. I don't want like every little input element to like cause that to happen. So maybe I would only, you know, do that every once in a while. Or, you know what I could do? I could even like detect an idle state of the user. So like if they're not trying to click on something you know, that's gonna cause them frustration or whatever. Maybe I just do like an auto save in the background. So I'd have that like save button in the top right. But like if they're idle for like, you know, five seconds, right? I can just like do a quick save. And then the other option, I guess, is to do it in the, in a web worker. So I think, um, can I use web workers? I think they're pretty widely supported right now. But let's see, 93%, it's decent. It's in IE 11. IE 11 is the, late, is the earliest version of IE that we're supporting and they're supported in Edge too. So I think we're all set to go with them. I think that they have access to the DOM, but I'm not sure. Um, I guess I could search that real quick. But anyways, so it's possible that I can do all of these like saving of the DOM stuff in a web worker. And if that's true, then... Okay, so it doesn't have access to the DOM. Well, so maybe I could pass it the DOM somehow and then have it do like all the parsing and the, and the Ajax call to the server in the web worker. I'm not sure. Anyways, I'm a little concerned about the um, performance aspects of it. Hopefully it's not a big deal. Hopefully it just works. Um, but we'll see next time, you know, as I explain things and as we start building this out. Okay. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.